Yeah, welcome to a new episode of Talks. Today we have a new guest, Linda Liebling, here in the studio. Super nice to have you. First of all, hello and thank you for having me. I'm really excited to be here. Um, I created a magazine called Girls with Curls. Um, it's about the life realities of black women in German-speaking countries. And for me, it was really a purpose to, of course, because I'm black myself, um, to bring these perspectives into, yeah, the, uh, to get an audience to these perspectives. You said also that next year you want to focus way more on the whole produ production side, right? That you are kind of mm. tuning down your agency work a little bit. What are the obstacles you are kind of facing at the moment with entrepreneurship? Of course, it's money. <laughs> <laughs> it's always money. Um, yeah, for me now, a priority is really to focus on to get, getting a budget, to really be able to create a really nice company mm -hmm. where I can yeah. pay people well. And that's really, really one of my, my goals for next year. It's really an urge for me. I really like working on Girls with Curls and um, I have so many ideas and the vision is big and I think like I have the energy to do it. So somebody has to, and that's why I decided, okay, I take the risk and try it. I already did something which is out there, and nobody can take it away from me. And why not, including more people who can also have like a benefit from mm. it. And uh, yeah, put also their perspectives in, in this work. And I would like to yeah, create a little Girls with Curse universe. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Can you maybe share a little bit more about your vision on that one? The vision is really to establish that Girls with Curse is seen as a really high-end magazine and um, that, it's, that there is more around the magazine than just the print version. We will also step into the digital world. Mm -hmm. We are also like working on a concept how we want to do it there to uh, give more access to the content that's in the print magazine mm -hmm. when you don't and when you were not able to buy it or you yeah you're too late because we already sold out or something like that that you still have an opportunity to get access to the content and we're working on that but uh, yeah. And it's also so interesting, I was lately thinking a lot about which people influenced me on, on the journey and, and the path I took. So I was wondering, were there any influential people in your life that helped you to kind of like see the path? But I always had yeah, different people on my side who were always like grounding me and pushing me and believing in me. So that's now, that is now like eight years, eight years ago that I started being self-employed and that's why I would say it would never have worked out with other people mentoring you or being on your side and this can be people out of your work uh, environment but it can also be like your friends or your family yeah. yeah but i think it's so important to kind of choose well uh, which partnerships you have in life in a way and really focus on them and trying to build on upon of them and yeah. um I don't know, go the way together. Otherwise, I don't know. That's at least how I function. I, I would find it too boring <laughs> to do everything on my own. I, yeah. I really need that in a way. I'm um, totally also a team player. But on the other hand, I think a lot of people who are self-employed and maybe working on their own in the beginning, they really have that feeling that they are putting so much pressure on themselves. You know, it's not good enough. I have to go to that level of perfectionism. Uh, where it kind of pushes the boundaries again and so on. And yeah. this constant thrive for involvement um, probably is also the, the reason why someone gets self-employed because in, in different uh, spaces you may, be, you may not be able to do it actually. Yeah. But on the other hand, it can be um, this toll on yourself, I think, which is crazy. And I think it's important to address, I mean, especially when you're producing such a product, um, when do you say it's done or it ended, you know? Is it a deadline which you put on yourself or...? Actually, it's always a feeling. Mm. Sometimes I have to um, calm myself down that the content we have and uh, what the language uh, I created uh, visually, it's already something that stands for itself. That's why I think I have a kind of good feeling for how much investment I put um, in the magazine. So That's a good thing to have actually. For me at least it was really difficult, at least in the beginning, to decide if it's good or if it's perfect or yeah, if you should like overwork it or redo it or because it's a thin line 
between like it's good, it's 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 nice, and it's done to overproducing something. But I think really what I learned at least through the last years is it's better to hit the um, ground running and you know producing stuff, putting stuff out there than waiting for the perfect um, end result. And it, it's super scary in a way because you're putting yourself out there. I mean, this magazine kind of stands for your style. You initiated it, so you know it's your name in a way. But on the other hand, I think it's also nice to have that courage and you know just put it out there and see what happens and really go through every iteration and do 100 magazine issues, you know, that would be so cool. I mean, if you look back and you think like, whoa, I did 100 <laughs> issues to this topic and now I told, yeah, I told my story, you know, that's yeah. what life is about. On the other hand, there's always this question of, you know, freedom in a way. We, we all became self-employed because we thought, ah, cool, we have more creative freedom. Okay, yeah. check, maybe there. On the other hand, there's this time issue. Um, um, some people, they start to say like, okay, I have a five-day week and the weekends are free. How do you do it? Exactly like that. <laughs> 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 yeah, I started in the beginning to uh, also like educate my clients that they don't get any kind of new uh, version or draft from something uh, Monday morning because that would um, assume that I'm working on the weekend and I don't want it to also put myself in the position that I have the need or that I need to work on the weekend and um, I also have so many interests which are besides working I, of course, I like to work on stuff and I like to create stuff, but I really, my life is bigger than work. So that's why I also want to meet my friends. I want to, want to travel. I want to like read or uh, I'm really into food. So cooking is also something I really enjoy. And if I yeah, would work too much, I, would, I know that I would be exhausted and my energy level would be kind of low. And this would like lead to maybe to depression or something like that. And I was taking care of myself in, like from the first day on because I know how I am and what I need to be fulfilled and balanced. And of course, sometimes it works and it worked out and sometimes it didn't. Um, and of course, I'm sometimes working on the weekends, but it's more like if I decide to, that it makes um, my next week a bit easier and I can do it, but I don't have to. No then it's something different. Mm -hmm. It's about this inner barrier, I think. People yeah. sometimes build up over time mm -hmm. if they kind of um, build a wall in, in their brain more or less and think mm -hmm. like, I have to work against it. Uh, that's a problem and then mm -hmm. probably this also leads to depression. I think if you are kind of deciding it for yourself, it's cool. But from my experience, especially in the beginning, I didn't have a limit on in terms of like my commitment to things. Like I imagine the first projects we had, we also took on jobs where we didn't know how to do it actually. And then we had to work like 32 hours straight, uh, slept a few hours, did it again. And that's super unhealthy, but I did it when I was probably, or when we were like around 20, the beginning of 20. Yesterday. And, uh, <laughs> yesterday, don't you see those? <laughs> no, that's my two and a half year old kids giving me nightmares. No, man. But um, you know what I mean? So I, I just wondered, was it really always like this? Or, it, or was there like a learning curve in the beginning? But I have, because I have the feeling that, you know, you have to find your right meter of work. For instance, for me, if, sometimes it's better to actually work stuff from, you know, work a little bit on the weekend and have it done. And then on the Monday, it's like a more chilled start or whatever. Yeah, I started from the beginning that I thought, why should I not have a weekend because I'm self-employed. I don't know if you do really, really great stuff just because you work lots of time on it. I think time management is something which lots of designers don't have because they are so con uh, involved with what they are doing. They are the design of the often. Yeah, that's one part, but on the other hand, I think it's also... And that pressure from the clients, depending on the mm. size, of course. Yeah. yeah, and also sometimes you really think like, um, maybe, oh man, there's a financial pressure, for instance. I just know in our early days, I mean, it was like that, that you had probably this one client who would pay, you know, your salaries more or less. And then you think like, oh God, I have to sure. over deliver, over deliver, over deliver, because in a way uh, I have to keep this client. And then obviously there's this fear of, um, 
yeah, existential fear or whatever, sure. which always um, is there and which never goes away. Uh, it's crazy. Like no matter to whom I talk, um, big companies or small or um, I don't know, it doesn't matter really. This existential threat really doesn't go away, which is also crazy. So. I think just saying that actually helps <laughs> yeah. because people think like, oh my God, um, I don't have money to pay this and that. But in the end, everything will be fine. You will find a way you are a creative person and um, it will go away. But that's also a factor I found, which yeah, kind of drove true. us in the beginning where we thought, oh, we have to get this done by this deadline. We really have to keep this client and push, push, push. But it depends also who is your competitor, because mm. if you have a client who doesn't know, who just saw your work, um, he or she doesn't know mm -hmm. what how much time it takes you to do that because you can be really really great and do something in one hour yeah. which is gorgeous and you can invest 10 hours which is uh, and it's gorgeous yeah i think good design is also something you I, because i'm actually it's the conversation goes in this direction because i'm actually thinking at the moment a lot about how to um, set my prices mm -hmm. and um for for now i think like um that they are based on time is doesn't feel right anymore yeah. mm -hmm. because I was like yeah it takes me like four or five days this is my um, salary for the day so yeah that's fine and then they think like oh you need five days for it and sometimes <laughs> I think like yeah actually and maybe I just take it, it takes just two days but it depends on you being annoying maybe <laughs> and yeah. one, another round and another round and yeah. another round and then of course the they don't understand why it costs more or something like that. And also sometimes I think like I'm now I'm working as a designer when I finished my studies in 2012 and I think like, okay, I have like work experience over 10 years. Mm -hmm. yeah. So of mm -hmm. course it takes me less time to do something which you can work with. Yeah. And that's why sometimes I, I don't, yeah, I, I'm not sure anymore how to create uh, like offers or something like that, that people understand the, um, also the quality you are like serving as a designer. Mm. So how do you do it? Uh, Asking you a question. Uh, sure. <laughs> That's, because uh, this is yeah. something and, really and, I wonder how to do it. And, and also thinking about what, you, what impact your work or like yeah. economically or for the brand you're working, yes. your, your design and your work, what impact does that have on their business and yeah. what value comes with that? So I think this is a really important question to ask and, and that's super interesting that you're like dealing with that topic right now um, yeah. because I think a lot of designers are thinking about that and it's really hard to like trend or change the perspective from like hourly based working or daily based working and working hours mm. into value based pricing. I yeah think. and that's really hard because the learning curve from the clients is like kind of low because they are used to, because for them it's logic, okay, it takes five days, mm. I pay the five days. But, but on the other hand, they also want a fixed price. And I think that's yeah. the thing where you can go in, where you say, mm. hey, do you want to have really hourly based? I mean, the question is, um, do you build them really after your hours in the end? Or do you just say, okay, I have five days and this will cost this amount of money. And no matter how the project goes, you will always pay those five days. Um, so I think there's this different approach in, in the agency world. I know, for instance, people really bill every hour they lock and then it's a variable price more or less. Mm. But as you said, I think the, the concept of value-based pricing is quite interesting. And then it's more a question about finding out what the impact will be for you or your business. And mm. um, we try to do that um, in the first uh, talks with them to, and ask them really about um, why they do it, um, why they want to do it with us, mm. and why they want to do it now. And really ask those why questions in a way uh, to figure out what the impact could be and then try to really write down um, a fixed amount probably. But yeah, we have this discussion uh, actually all the time. Yeah. And um, it doesn't make sense because you know, you don't want to be paid by the hour because it actually punishes you by being fast. And I mean, the client, what does he want or she? Uh, they want, you know, a fast um, and very good product mm. as soon as possible. Uh, so it doesn't make sense to really pay people mm -hmm. less when they are faster, right? It's yeah, a friend of mine says when you want to have it really fast, you have to pay the double price. <laughs> <laughs> this is actually a kind of uh, attitude I like. <laughs> but, yeah, you want it fast yeah. and you want it to be perfect. So you have to pay uh, more, yeah. which is also really a nice concept. 
And um, but the, the problem with the value based thing is for me that I sometimes think like, yeah, but I can't like, be, I don't know how you feel, but I can't guarantee that they will sell 20,000 products in half a year. So uh, this is something also because sometimes you don't know the field they are working at. They know it better. Of course, I know that when I'm providing a design that um, really um, is the face of it. And of course, we have also an expertise. It's not like that. I think like, okay, I design something and then they are um, broke after two days. <laughs> no, of course not. But still, value-based also, I think, affords that you have to give them a kind of guarantee if in a certain amount. And this is also something I'm sometimes a bit afraid of because I can't tell how the world would change. You see this with the war and climate crisis and everything. This is something you can't, um, yeah, see. But I think, um, I mean, you're also in branding, mm -hmm. right? So the, the main or the core value really is making a brand relevant in a certain target audience and making mm -hmm. it distinct. And that is something you can somehow find a way to value in a way. And mm. I think it doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be like, ah, 20,000 um, goods sold more after this branding thing <coughs> or so. But it's more like, ah, okay, now you're more distinct. And um, I don't know, your audience probably uh, finds you more interesting or something like this. Mm. And how, what kind of value would that bring towards your brand? Mm. If you think about, ah, okay, maybe you're doing a million a year in revenue and then um, you can price it down from there when you say like, oh, okay, so maybe they should spend around 10% of their um, annual revenue and the branding, how valuable would that be um, within that year? And then going from there, I guess. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I mean, it's... A, if they tell you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, true. Say, oh yeah, we make like 10K. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, true. Uh, true. I mean, but on the no, other I hand... I have really, really great and nice clients. They're always really <laughs> transparent. <laughs> but, um, yeah. I think it starts maybe with not writing down the, the hours, you know, just mm. saying like, okay, this is amount X. And then they say, yeah, but, but how long do you work? Yeah, how long it takes? I mean, and this is your fixed price. Do you want a fixed price? Do you want a variable price? And I, I think everyone wants a fixed price. So It's about control in the end. Yeah. But how can you con control that somebody has ideas? Yeah. This is something which really, yeah, annoys me sometimes when it comes to design that I think like hey of course I'm a creative person but I also have like days where everything is flowing and days where it's not. I have the feeling when you have time everything can like flourish in another way and uh, the ideas can also develop. For me when I have those deadlines I always think about processes. I don't know if you developed some through the years um, to produce a logo in five days. Yeah. I don't know. Did you? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like that I'm a design discounter. <laughs> no, no. It's just like because I, I have like a fixed price in my yeah. mind, which is like these four, five days mm -hmm. I would need. But of course, I sometimes just leave it there and continue next week working on it. But like total in total, yeah. I think it's like five days working on it. Actually, I'm also not... Um, a designer that is really, which, because you were asking me in the beginning um, how much time it takes and how I do my decisions, I'm also not really patient. Mm. Uh, so <laughs> that, that's, I'm really impatient and that's why I would, I'm not this kind of typographic nerd who can sit like on one letter for three months. This would never be me. But sometimes I also push myself to do it because I know it also gets better when I take yeah. the time. Yeah, I mean I also... To find a balance. In a way, that's like the, the, the bread and butter, right? And then obviously there always has to be um, a certain amount of experimentation, I think. And yeah. That's also something you were touching base in the beginning with the magazine where you said like, ah, yeah, from now to then, I'm trying to reinvent some parts of it. Not everything, but some parts. Mm. Um, I think it's, it's super important to kind of uh, get yourself out there um, from time to time and really challenge um, your views in a way and um, I don't know, getting out of your bubble in a way. 
And um, I mean, that can happen for me, for instance, with different areas. For instance, architecture is a huge inspiration or you were saying food. Yeah, food is crazy. I mean, like mm. the statics of food, I think, um, are one Evolved of the... Also. Yeah, but for me, it's like one of the uh, huge sources of really giving me creativity and in a way. I, I think it's cool because it's this completely different medium, but it's also about, um, you know, color selection, textures. the dishes, textures, material changes. Mm. Um, and all those kind of things. I think it's important to also look um, somewhere else because then you don't copy as much in a way. Because I mean, we are yeah. we are kind of in this field. Uh, everything is a reproduction. Everything is a reproduction. That's that's it. I think also um, um, that is one part, and the other one, really experimentation. I think is is so cool um, in all different terms. Uh, always trying to um, yeah try new things and really push yourself in a way. And I mean, you're doing it with this magazine, that's crazy. <laughs> so when is the next issue coming out? We try to do it next June, mm -hmm. because I think it would be really nice to have it in summer. But the other issue, the second one will be in October or something. Cool, like. thank you very much for uh, coming by, stopping by. It was great having you. It was yeah. a pleasure.